The process of prayer is no longer predicated on your own natural ability to push, but the inbuilt capacity that is linked to the investment, the spiritual investment, the spiritual capital that God has made available in your spirit. It, it begins to run on that capacity. That's why two hours is the same as seven hours is the same as 14 hours. As long as the system is still operational, you can just, do you understand what I'm talking about? You will be in the presence of God for as long as it will take to prosecute a matter that is hanging in the spirit for which God wants you to attend to. And it will not be by your own energy, it will be by his energy. So, so why, can, why will I risk fainting when God has provided for my adventure in the spirit? Please let me tell your neighbor, I choose not to faint. <laughs> All right, two points I need to bring to your notice quickly before we go to the practical session. Pastor James is supposed to be my... Okay, I'm still good, all right. Okay. Okay, let's just jump to uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. And we'll, we'll just take a reading. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For the Lord to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men verily i say unto you they have their reward but thou when thou prayest enter into thy closet and when thou hast shut the door pray to thy father which is in secret and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly that's the lecture that's the reading for the night the first thing that we need to define is who a prayer hypocrite is. Because Jesus raises the issue of hypocrisy on the subject of prayer. If you read from the book of Matthew chapter 6 beginning from verse 1, you are going to see a giving hypocrite. We have a giving hypocrite. He now also mentions that there is a prayer hypocrite. And he also mentions that there is a fasting hypocrite. But because our emphasis is prayer, I will not be touching the others. We we'll just like to find out who is a prayer hypocrite. It is possible for all of your prayer intentions to end at hypocrisy. And that's why Jesus is saying, just in case, just in case you have an intention to be a prayerful person, make sure you avoid becoming a hypocrite. So we need to define who a prayer hypocrite is so that you avoid it. That's the first obstacle that every prayer man, every prayer woman has to avoid is the possibility of ending up becoming a prayer what? The definition of a prayer hypocrite is in the context of who the Father is as revealed in these two verses of scripture. The Bible says that the prayer hypocrite likes to pray standing in the synagogues. He likes to pray standing in the corner of the streets to be seen by men. That's the problem with a hypocrite. The reason for his efforts is so that he can capture the attention of who? Men. Right? So maybe when I see Pastor James praying and then I, I try to pray louder than Pastor James to show that I am the next best thing in prayer. I have hallelujah become a hypocrite what i'm doing i am doing it because i want men to see me such an initiative does not strike any chord in the realm where the father is domiciled okay now are you with me okay now he said something very critical here that i also need to draw our attention to before we begin our journey and the journey is twofold for tonight twofold we need to consider two factors on how to texture your inner membrane in order for you to participate in God. So, now, second thing that is visible in that presentation is this fact. But before I mention it, I need to ask you a question. When, when, when you pray, what's your expectation? You, to be heard or to be answered? Or? All right. We need to clarify these things. We will not assume that you know. 
because we are trusting God that in the United Kingdom prayer will become something that you'll find people doing on the streets again. That people will be led to Christ, kneeling down in the rain on the streets. And it, yes, prayer will become customary, it will become common. Children will pray in tongues and all kinds of things will begin to take place. Yes, we believe God for that. Now, most of us, when we pray, we pray so that we can be heard and also eventually answered. But you see, in what Jesus presents in this scripture, Jesus was not even talking about answers. The word that Jesus uses here is reward. Whereas you are looking for answers, God is looking for how to give you prayer rewards. The Bible says, call unto me and I will answer you. That's what you are seeking. So I will give you your answers. Then beyond your answers, and I will show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. You see, your contract, your participation of prayer uh, doesn't capture the other aspects that God is willing to give you. You came because you want answers. But God has designed us and designed life in such a way that you cannot but pray. And if you are foolish enough to accept to pray, he will give you your answers. Then he will invite you beyond your answers to show you great and mighty things that you do not know. Unfortunately, the hypocrite has no prayer reward. That's the problem with being a hypocrite because all he's doing is to become a spectacle in the eyes of men. So he's exempted from this blessing called prayer reward. That's number two. Did you get that? There are some blessings in the kingdom of God that is only open to intercessors, to prayer people. There are depths in God. When we begin to uh, trace all the metaphors that are in the New Testament that gives us an idea of the benefits and the powers of a prayer man. When we begin to talk about guardianship, which is a level of territorial responsibility and the attendant compliments that God by his mercy makes available because someone exercises the responsibility of guardianship in a territory, in a local assembly, in a family, when we go into that, you will now see that prayer is way beyond answers. There were many things hanging in the realm of the spirit that God is looking for an excuse to put on your life. When you become foolish enough to accept the, that we have been condemned to prayer and you begin to practice it, God will find you worthy of becoming a recipient of inheritances that are locked away in the heavenlies. That Men are no longer interested in again. He will begin to uncover the treasury, the storehouse of grace. And he will begin to put on your life things that you never asked him. It says the hypocrite already has his reward. And because of that, uh, his reward is being seen by men. Now, it was after this that he now revealed to us the first quality of his father. Because if there is anybody that knows the Father, it is Jesus. So if we want to explore who the Father is, then we'll need to study the Bible to find what Jesus said about his Father. That is what is going to give us the insight into how to engage God. Are you there? Us. Who? Father. So the first thing that Jesus says about his Father is that his Father is in secret. That's the moment. It's in secret. We need to travel with two scriptures. In secret. If God wants to move in your life, he has chosen to move from your heart. So, if God wants to conquer your life, the first place he conquers is your heart. Your heart is an entry organ. Your heart is a love organ. Your heart is the tile mark that God comes to run on if he wants to move on your life. And that's where God hides. If you are going to prosper in the prayer enterprise, then you must be someone that is conscious of the fact that God operates from the secret and the inward parts. And that's the heart. 
the secret and the inward parts. And because of this, are you, are you with me? Because of this, uh, I need to read the book of Matthew chapter 15 verse 8. Please put it on the screen for me. Matthew chapter 15 verse number 8. Where's the technical man? Matthew 15 verse 8. He said, these people, yeah? You took it away. Oh, it was, the scripture was showing on my screen and now it has vanished. All right, let me try to get it from my Bible. Matthew 15. Okay, it's back. He said, these people draw it nigh unto me with their mouth and honor it me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. See, that's that secret place. That's where God is. And um, unfortunately, the average believer is not conscious of the fact that God is in that secret place of your heart. If you are conscious of the fact that God is in that secret place, the way you order your life will matter. For instance, Potiphar's wife came to Joseph with a proposal. Lie with me. Potiphar was not there. There was no servant there. There was no way anyone would know that anything happened. Meanwhile, the Bible never revealed that Potiphar had any children. So it seemed to me that Potiphar was childless. And if Joseph should have something with Potiphar's wife, he's going to be in her good books and maybe she will recommend that he be adopted. He's going to have a good life. There were many more things for him to gain going with her than not to go with her. But you see, Joseph had something going with God and it was in the privacy of his heart. It was on the strength of that which was going, he had with God in his heart. He, he could not go with the woman because of what was going on where in his heart. So he decided to be a victim of any weapon the woman was going to send at him because he wanted to preserve what he had going on where. There are some battles people bring to you. If you are conscious and if you, if you highly price that which you have with God in your heart, you will be willing to be called a fool all right meanwhile some people trample on your rights deliberately because they want you to react but by reacting you would have undermined what you have with him that is in secret when we begin to take seriously the fact that we have something going on on our inside with God and that thing that we have going on with God regulates us such that we will refuse to fight for our rights sometimes because we see that there is a possibility of compromising what I have inside if I decide to fight. So I don't mind being called a fool so that I can keep what I have in secret. The Bible says that this our father who is in heaven, he is a God that is in secret. You know, it is possible for someone to be saying something with his mouth, but his heart is far away. It's in vain. The guys didn't know that he is in secret. That's the first thing. So there were fights. I refused to fight. Because I know if I fight, I will lose the tenderness with which I interface with him. Your heart is your treasure. How many of you have read the scripture that says, keep your heart? With all diligence for out of it are the issues of life do you realize that because you have a brain God had to make a skull to protect your brain because you have lungs God had to make rib cages to protect your lungs and to protect your heart do you know that because of the sensitivity and the importance of your spinal cord God had to create a vertebral column to protect it the only thing God did not provide protection for is your heart he says, you will be the security agency around it. Keep it. For out of it are the issues of life. I looked up the word issues in the Hebrew and check it. If you check it in the Hebrew for anybody that has an electronic Bible, you will find that the word issues is equal to boundary. Boundary, geographical boundary. It means the state of your heart right now is what is responsible for where you are. Yes, your boundary in destiny is is a function of the state of your heart that's why if there's somebody here and you you are deceptive in your heart 
and you believe that that's being smart oh my god that's why you are where you are you have already defined your boundary that you cannot go beyond this point that if you are going to go beyond this point it will be by your your skills your wisdom your 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 smartness that's a very poor way a poor approach to life it means you have no reinforcement from heaven heaven cannot recommend you oh my god you are not in view whatsoever to being picked to become a functionary that God can depend on to fast track his agenda upon the face of the earth out of it the Bible says are the boundaries of life when I found that I began to decide not to fight let me be the fool before men but I have something going on in my heart and as long as that heart is still tender and adequately in alignment I can pick things from heaven I can get wisdom from the presence of God I, 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 I will know what to do and how to get it done I, I, in fact things that have not even existed before I can have ideas about them my mind can become fruitful just because I have come to realize that the source of all things will be drawn from my intimacy with God prayer is an enterprise that you cannot do without your heart because if prayer doesn't affect your heart it cannot change your life it cannot you just show up in the presence of God and you want to talk to God then he reminds you how you shouted on your wife so what he's saying is make peace before you come back that's when you will discover how difficult it is to say sorry you will check your height first <laughs> the flesh is terrible the flesh the fallen nature is terrible but you see if your heart is going to be ahead of your head then you will need to follow those instructions that God will give you that will weaken your flesh weaken the power of the fallen nature on your life so that the power of him that is resurrected that locks in your heart can take the lead that is the description of what it means to be a spiritual man so the first thing i want to bring to our notice is that the god our father is in secret i will tell you how to find him so that's the practical lesson the first practical lecture is how to find him that is in secret If you want to find him always you want to find him perpetually when you quarrel with your wife before you you sleep call her and say you know that is very difficult what I'm telling you <laughs> what, what I'm telling you what I'm telling you is very difficult if you need to close your eyes close them and just say <laughs> for long she will not know why you why you behave like that she will not know she won't know that there's something you are trying to she will think that suddenly love for her just came on you <laughs> she won't know that there's something deeper than that that requires that you make peace i dwell in secret i am he that dwells in secret that's number one the second thing is that the bible reveals that he also sees in secret it, you know it's possible for you to dwell in secret and see in the open he dwells in secret and he sees also in secret when god was educating samuel on the prophetic would be kings were standing before him and he, he looked at eliab eliab in terms of his physical structure his height the way he was built his biceps his triceps he had the physique of a king and samuel was already making moves to empower him to enthrone him when god says ah your scale of measurement is faulty i do not look at the outward appearance so he was he's educating his man i look upon the heart. so most times the, when you see the, the people that god chooses for his assignments when you look at them physically they don't look it 100% of the times for instance I was born with facial palsy I've never closed this eye before and I was born in Tamara and then the Lord said I will preach his gospel so my first question was you created people that could talk <laughs> and you came to me that cannot talk and you are telling me to preach for you and preaching is talking I don't understand your logic 
I come from a family of intellectuals. I mean, a long line of intellectuals. So, and yeah, very sharp, very sharp, very sharp people. And among my immediate siblings, in terms of intellectual capacity, I'm not number one, I'm not number two, and I'm not number three out of seven. <laughs> These guys are very, very sharp guys. Right? So, why not pick? So when you look at them in the natural, they, they do not qualify to become what God is using them to do. Not because it is not good for God to have an intellectual, but the way God chooses his people is according to his rating from the perspective of the heart. So some things may not make sense, they may not be logical, but the realm in which they make sense is from the realm of the heart. He said, do not look at the outward appearance. I have already rejected him. My analysis is done from the perspective of the heart. So it is you that tends your heart, that is willing to pay a price to maintain your alignment. It is you that God looks on and he said, this is my man. And you know that, are you there? As I round up, you know that it is possible for you to neglect your heart and then you are everywhere speaking in tongues so loud and everybody is seeing you and say, oh, that sister he has fire. Meanwhile, the heart is out of place. That is a description of a hypocrite.